In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We were deemed worthy to celebrate the Feast of Pascha. And before the Feast of Pascha, we had the vigil service for Holy Friday. Thursday night, going into Friday morning. And in the Gospel passages concerning the crucifixion, <laughs> we hear it was the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth. And in the service that we chanted today for the Samaritan woman, the very first hymn, makes reference to the sixth hour, since it was at the sixth hour that the Samaritan woman went to the well. <coughs> in the hymn, we read that at the sixth hour, Eve was fooled in paradise. The Lord came to fix all of that, to fix sin which has crept into the race of mankind, and he comes now at the sixth hour to heal that which Eve did when Satan spoke to her, when he spoke into her ear and she was poisoned by the venom of the serpent. So the Lord comes and he gives us the antidote the healing medicine, <laughs> and he makes very good points. He doesn't just come in a casual, nonchalant manner, but he comes in a manner which should become obvious to all of us. Now, of course, many of us have heard of this gospel passage, but probably most have not taken note of these important facts, that it was at the sixth hour that Eve was fooled, and at the sixth hour, now the Lord gives the healing medicine. And at that sixth hour, when Eve was fooled, and Satan spoke into her ear, and she was poisoned, even so, at the sixth hour, the Lord speaks into the ear of a person who is, seems to be like the personification of the wrong person, who would go among the Jews who would go to a Samaritan woman since the Samaritans were schismatics and heretics, and especially to a woman like this who was a sinner. Who would go? The Lord, the Lord did not go only, but he came. Last week, <laughs> we heard concerning the paralytic who said, I have no man. And the Lord answers with a stentorian voice, how can you say I have no man? For you, I became a man. We hear in the hymnology of the church. It's very important for us to study the hymnology of the church, and this is the reason why I keep stressing to the monastics and to the lay people that we should be paying attention, we should be watchful, because there are so many mysteries, so many things which we can catch. And this is why we should read carefully and we should chant carefully so that we could catch these things, but more importantly, we should be living the life in Christ so that we can catch these things. Because it takes a lot more than the intellect to grasp these things. It's definitely a spiritual matter. There are plenty of people who, are, who have great intellects and who are intellectuals, but are, are at a loss when it comes to these things. So since Satan poisoned Eve, and that poison was so strong that it actually passed on from Eve to Adam. In a like manner, the Lord speaks now and he strikes up a conversation with this woman at Jacob's well. We are at a disadvantage in the English language because the word pihi has a few meanings. It means well, it means source. And so there are a few meanings which come out a lot more strongly in the original Greek. But the Lord is at the well, and there's a reason why now this past week we've had all these images concerning water. The miracle of the paralytic near the sheep's gate, of course, we start with that miracle where an angel, this was last Sunday, where an angel came down and shook the water, he troubled the water. And whosoever first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. <clears throat> so the man had no one, but the Lord came. Since the Lord is the wellspring of life, the Lord is the source of life. Then we had the image of water in the feast of mid Pentecost. Wherefore, O wellspring of life, Christ our God, glory be to thee. 
We chanted, at mid-feast give thou my thirsty soul to drink of the waters of piety. For thou, Savior, didst cry unto all whosoever is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. We prepared ourselves by hearing these things, and now we hear concerning this. So the Lord strikes up a conversation with the Samaritan woman, whom, according to the Jewish tradition, was not supposed to be speaking to her at all. <coughs> and he says, very abruptly, give me water. Give me water to drink. And at the end, of course, of this conversation, the Lord gets her to understand that she should be asking that question of him. And of course, the Lord helping her to understand spiritually and helping us all to understand spiritually tries to get us to understand the point of this whole matter. So as the Lord speaks to her, she starts off being surprised and says, how is it that you're asking me water to drink? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And the Lord continues the conversation. If you knew who asks, who's asking, you would ask him of water to drink. Remember now, even as the serpent speaks and poisons, so also every word of the Lord has power and grace to the person who accepts. There are many people who heard the message of salvation and rejected the word, but for those who have faith, for those who are of the right disposition and who are sincere of heart, there's a big change that takes place. Those words which the Lord spoke specifically to this woman, we hear spoken to us in the liturgy. Please do not underestimate the words that I'm telling you right now. Those words which the Lord spoke to the Samaritan woman are spoken to us now, in the Divine Liturgy, who has the ears to hear? Who is able to let these words sink into their hearts? Who is able at the sixth hour where there's darkness over all the earth, where poison comes into the race of mankind? Who is able and who is willing and who is wanting to be healed? Those are the ones that the Lord will work with. The Lord knew who he was working with, with the Samaritan woman. And so the conversation goes on and they go back and forth. Any type of conversation with God is what? It is prayer. Essentially, it becomes prayer. So without even realizing it, here is the Lord healing this person in a marvelous way. It reminds me of the saying among the Holy Fathers <coughs> of the desert. Trick me and save me, O Lord. The Lord comes in such a way where he can actually, in such a masterful way, in such a marvelous manner, he comes to heal us since he specifically says, I will, I wish that all men be saved. This is something which our Pharisees, our modern day Pharisees should think about. There are plenty of modern day zealots who are very happy without a qualm to shut the door of paradise on anyone, whoever they want to shut the door of paradise, acting as if they are God. That is not the way of the Lord. The Lord tries to find reasons to save us. He wishes that all men be saved. And you who think in such a manner have not the mind of Christ. This is why we're supposed to develop the mind of Christ. So we who are true believers have to understand that as we develop the mind of Christ, that we must preserve the purity of the faith with the mind of Christ, not with the mind of the Pharisees, of the Jews who rejected Christ. The conversation continues and dogmatic matters come up since those things need to be cleared up. And as this woman says, we and our father, Our fathers worshipped here in this mountain. How say you that our fathers worshipped in this mountain? And you say that the Lord is worshipped in Jerusalem. Our Lord responds. He gives her the answer because this woman is actually sincere, looking for reason, looking for answers. She's looking. She's, she's wanting to be a believer. 
And so the Lord says, believe me, the hour comes, neither here nor there will the Lord be worshipped, for God is spirit. The Lord at this, time, at this time reveals to us that God is spirit, and that the Lord must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> and whosoever wishes to worship him will receive the illumination of grace, will, re will receive light. Finally, the woman comes to the point where she's forgotten about the water. And we come to the point where the Lord himself continues to stress after clearing up the issue of dogma, where he actually says, salvation is of the Jews, because at this point, <clears throat> The Jews were the true believers, but he says very, very clearly that the time comes, and yes, it's even now, when, the, when uh, they will worship the Lord, not in this mountain nor in Jerusalem, but in spirit throughout the whole world. She says, I know the Messiah comes, that he cometh, and he will reveal to us all things, and the Lord finally says to her, I am he. But before this, the woman makes a request and she says, give me this water to drink. But the Lord at this point finds the perfect occasion to tell her to deal with her sin. Since she's asking for water, she's asking for the source, she's asking for the wellspring of life, she's, ask, she's asking for spiritual experience. He says, okay. But first, you have to call your husband. He doesn't come out straightway and say what the matter is, because he wants her to think about it. And he wants her to come to some point of repentance. And she says, I have no husband. And then the Lord surprises her when he says, you're right in what thou said. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. <coughs> she says, I perceive that thou art a prophet, and so on and so forth. Finally, it says in the scriptures that she leaves the water pots, and she runs when the Lord says to her, I who speak unto thee am he. I am the Messiah. She leaves the water pots, and she runs meaning she's forgotten the whole purpose, the whole reason why she went there now. She, did, she went there for water, for the physical water. We can't survive without water. We need water to, to survive. We can survive without food longer than we can survive without water. <laughs> so she goes and she tells the people, you remember how Eve went and told Adam she passed on the venom? Well, now she passed on the holiness because she had been enlightened. And she went and she spoke to the people and she says, come and see a man who basically has told me everything. He's told me everything concerning my life. You know that we've only read those things which are written, but the apostle John says that if we were to, if, if all the things were to be written, the entire world couldn't contain the books. So there's probably a lot more in this conversation. Now, these are the key points that have been recorded for us. And so, at the word of this woman, they all go to find the Lord. These are searchers. And the Lord speaks to them, and they say, now we believe, not only for your word to the Samaritan woman, but we have seen and heard ourselves, that, and we know and we believe that this is the Christ, the Savior of the world. What a great confession. How is it they were so enlightened so quickly? It's an amazing thing. This Samaritan woman becomes Saint Fotini. She's a saint of our holy church. <laughs> and after the illumination that she receives from our Lord in this conversation, in her prayers, and in our Lord's responding to her prayers, in her search, and in her finding Christ, 
<laughs> she continues. She continues in this path of illumination and she is baptized eventually and she's, she's martyred for the sake of truth. We should keep these things in mind, my beloved Orthodox Christians, that we should understand them all spiritually. And remember, as, as I've said now, we should not underestimate the fact that the Lord speaks to us and he's here with us and he's looking for those who are searching for him. He's searching for those who are searching for him. Let us have a sincere heart. Let us not think that we have the answers for everything, but let us open our hearts and our minds to Jesus Christ, our Savior, who truly is here with us and truly is here speaking to us. Open your ears, open your hearts to him. Pray to the master to give you of this water, which will quench our thirst for eternity. And continue to hold on to these things that we've heard through the past great feasts and prepare yourselves now for the upcoming great feasts namely the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord, where our Lord takes our human nature and deifies it and brings it up to the heavens. He raises us up. We who are fallen are raised up only through Christ Jesus our Lord. And at the Feast of the Ascension, we chant to the Mother of God, O thou who in time didst give birth to the timeless one, when chrono ton achrono nafrasus ki isasa which shows us that creation, uh, time is created by God. God is outside of time. The sun was created at a certain time. And that's how we calculate time between the sun and the earth. But in time, the Lord comes to bring us into eternity. And finally, the seal of all the feasts is the Feast of Pentecost, which comes to us quickly, the coming of the, of the Holy Spirit. And at the baptismal services, at the end when <clears throat> the Christian, the newly sealed, newly enrolled soldier of Jesus Christ is confirmed with the Holy Chrismation. And when people are chrismated, the prayer which is said is the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Feast of Pentecost, everything is sealed and all these things now come to us in a very real way. May the Lord help us to understand the teachings of today's gospel passage. And may we all leave today, at the end of our service today, understanding that in order to receive this water, which springs up unto life everlasting, we must deal with our sins. There was no other way for the woman to receive of this water. And when she asked for this water, that was the time when the Lord brought before her her sins. We are all sinners in one way or another. The Lord loves the humble, but he resists the proud. And so we must all humble ourselves. And perhaps we can start humbling ourselves by saying we are too proud. And there is only one that really has a right to be proud, and that's God. And yet he's not, he's humble. And we who have every reason to be humble are proud. So we must think about these things and we must humble our hearts. A few days ago at the Synexes, we read that beautiful quote from St. Macarius, which I've said so many times. Think about it. Think about it carefully. St. Macarius says, Jesus Christ the Lord has done all this for you. He was crucified. He, he saved you. And you can't work for your own self. You can't struggle a little bit for your own self. He gave his whole life for you. Well, don't you think that perhaps you should 
at least struggle a little bit, like get up to go to church and do a few prostrations maybe, fast a little bit. Essentially, <laughs> the Lord wants our hearts. That is what he's searching for. And the well is deep. The well is deep, as we heard in today's scriptural passage, and the things of God are also deep. Let us not be shallow people, but let us ask of the Lord to give us, uh, give us his water, and he is the one that can go deeply into the well and bring us to life everlasting. To him be glory, and to the ages of ages. Amen.